You wake up one morning and suddenly every movement hurts. Your shoulders, your hips, and even getting out of bed seems to be impossible. But this is not aging. If you're over 50, it might be something far more serious, an inflammatory disease called polymyalgia rheumatica, or PMR. In this video, I will walk you through the most common signs of PMR and I will share some exciting news about brand new treatments that were recently approved for it. And for many of you with a diagnosis already, this type of therapy can change your life. My name is Dr. Diana Gnita. I'm a double board certified rheumatologist and I have treated thousands of patients with polymyalgia rheumatica. And I can tell you, many of these patients, when they come to me, they have already seen, back and forth, multiple other specialists. But first, what is polymyalgia rheumatica? Polymyalgia rheumatica, or PMR, is an inflammatory condition that causes pain, stiffness, and achiness in the muscles, primarily around the shoulders, the neck, and the hips. It is considered a form of inflammatory arthritis, and that means that your immune system will mistakenly attack the body-owned tissue, which will lead to inflammation of the joints and the surrounding tissues. Who are the people affected by PMR? PMR is a common disease in elderly adults, and it almost never occurs in people under the age of 50. The average age of onset is around 70 years old and it affects women about two to three times even more often than men. Now let's move on to the most common signs and symptoms. Sign number one, shoulder and hip pain. Most patients with polymyalgia rheumatica describe pain that starts in one shoulder and then in a few weeks will spread to both shoulders. Usually the shoulders will start first and then the pain can spread to the hips and the pelvic area in the next few weeks. It is not usually a sharp type of pain. It is deep, it is aching, and it will make lifting up the arms or combing the hair or getting dressed feel almost impossible. More rarely, patients can develop swelling of their hands, swelling of the wrists, the knees and ankles, and that makes the situation even more problematic because it can mimic rheumatoid arthritis. Sign number two, morning stiffness that will last for hours. If it takes you 45 minutes or even more to get out moving in the morning, that's not normal. In polymyalgia rheumatica, the stiffness can develop gradually over a few days or a few weeks, but it can also come in one day. But what is even more interesting is that Morning stiffness is symmetrical, which will involve both shoulders or both hips. And because of this stiffness, you may struggle to reach overhead, to get out of the bed, to walk to the restroom. And it can take you anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and even more hours to start loosening up. Sign number three, fever, fatigue, and unintentional weight loss. In the weeks before the muscle pain begins, there are many subtle signs. I call these warning signs. You may think you have the flu, but it's not quite the flu season. And some people will notice that they start losing weight without even trying. They feel feverish, they feel fatigued, and they lose their appetite. When these people will see doctors, people are usually told that it's common flu, and they usually get recommended to get some rest, to drink some water, to take a vitamin, but things will not usually improve. And then in the next few weeks, the muscle pain and the stiffness will start to surface. But there is one sign that you should never ignore, because if you do, there is something much more dangerous that can happen. If you start developing new headaches around the temples, or you start developing vision changes, and let me explain you that you can lose vision in one or both eyes, even for seconds. You can have blurry vision, or you can even have pain in one eye. This is an emergency. And here it is why. About 20% of patients with polymyalgia rheumatica may develop a condition called giant cell arthritis. And this is a type of vasculitis 
that inflames the arteries in your head and in your eyes. And if it's left untreated, it can lead to serious complications like blindness or stroke. Please do not wait to be seen by your primary care physician or to be seen by a neurologist or an eye doctor. You should go to the emergency room immediately. And now that you know how to recognize polymyalgia rheumatica, let's talk about how polymyalgia rheumatica is diagnosed. When I suspect PMR, based on the signs that we just discussed, I will order more tests and the ones that are most common ordered are the markers of inflammation. And they can be very high. The sedimentation rate and the C-reactive protein are usually elevated. For example, sedimentation rate levels can exceed the level of 40 and sometimes even 100 millimeters per hour. And this will suggest that that inflammation is real and it's systemic. But unlike rheumatoid arthritis, many of these patients, they have negative rheumatoid factor and negative anti-CCP antibodies. I always order this test for rheumatoid arthritis because many times polymyalgia rheumatica can mimic rheumatoid arthritis, but to make things even more complicated in some patients, about 5 to 20% in some studies, they have all the symptoms, but their markers of inflammation are normal. And that is why you need a rheumatologist who can look at the whole situation and understand your situation. And now let's move on, because after you have a diagnosis, you need treatment. For decades, the main treatment for polymyalgia rheumatica has been the prednisone, which is a very powerful anti-inflammatory steroid. I actually call it the magic pill, because when the diagnosis is correct, it works like magic. Why? Because with prednisone, patients can come back to their normal life in just a few days. And we don't need those high doses of steroids that are given in the emergency room. Usually, with just 15 milligrams per day, sometimes a little bit more, patients will have a great response. And that also gives me the confirmation that the diagnosis is correct. And then once symptoms will improve, I usually start taper the prednisone down, but slowly. And here it is what many doctors will miss the prednisone needs to be tapered down gradually. Why do I say this? Because many doctors do taper the prednisone too fast and then the pain comes back to what it was and that's why the patients will go back and forth many times because their symptoms will come back with vengeance. But steroids are not the perfect solution. As you all know, long-term use of steroids may cause in some people side effects like weight gain or high blood pressure or diabetes, osteoporosis, fractures, and an increased risk for infections. And one way of replacing steroids is to use methotrexate. These medications can be safely used in patients with diabetes, with severe osteoporosis, or in people who are developing severe side effects from prednisone. But some people have a hard time tolerating the medication or they're simply afraid. And that's why I want to talk to my patients about all their options, including new ones. Because in the last few years, we have new drugs approved. In 2023, the FDA approved sardilumab, which was the first biologic medications for polymyalgia rheumatica. It's an IL-6 inhibitor, a medication that blocks one of the main inflammatory pathways in this disease. And in this clinical trial of 118 patients with relapsing polymyalgia rheumatica, those treated with sarilumab every two weeks, they reach remission faster, they needed less prednisone, and they had fewer relapses and fewer side effects. Another IL-6 inhibitor, tocilizumab, has shown similar results. Those patients that received infusions with tocilizumab were more likely to achieve remission and the overall dose of steroids was so much lower because the steroids were discontinued so much sooner. There were some studies about other medications like rituximab, one infusion followed by the use of steroids, which showed some promising results, but there is also a significant risk for developing other side effects with these drugs. And I personally have never used this option in my patients. 
There are other biologics such as TNF alpha inhibitors. They were used in some studies, but the results did vary a lot. And now let me talk to you about JAK inhibitors like olumniant, varicitinib, or tofacinib. These drugs are also called small molecules. Why? Are they small drugs? No, they are actually pills. And unlike IL-6 inhibitors or TNF-alpha inhibitors, which come as injections or infusions, those JAK inhibitors medications are powerful pills that can also reduce that overactive immune system. Now, what do these studies say about the use of JAK inhibitors in polymyalgia aromatica? Baricitinib, or olumniant, was used in a small study of 34 patients, and it did show that after 12 weeks of treatment, with 4 mg daily, without any oral steroids, and this is important, 78% of patients achieved remission when they were compared with placebo. And then when they continued to treat these patients for 12 more weeks, with half of the dose, baricitinib 2 mg daily, the patients remain in remission for a full 36 weeks. Tofacinib, or Zelgens, was also used in a small study of 67 patients with newly diagnosed polymyalgia aromatica. Patients received in a randomized way either Tofacinib, 5 mg twice a day, or Prednisone, 15 mg every day, which was followed by a taper. At the end of the 12 and 24 weeks, patients had an equivalent response to both of these therapies. But JAK inhibitors are not for everyone. Not only that they are very expensive drugs, but they are also very hard to approve if you never tried or never failed any of the drugs that I told you about. The steroids, the methotrexate, the IL-6 inhibitors. But they also come with some side effects. If you have a history of heart disease or blood clots, I would not recommend you to take it. But to conclude, I use all of these options with great success in my clinic, but it is always an individualized and personalized plan for each of my patients. What should you do if you have been on prednisone for too long or if your symptoms are keep coming back? If you have been struggling to taper from your prednisone dose and if your pain comes back every time that you try to lower it, then talk to your rheumatologist or come to our clinic because we can use the most advanced therapy options just for you. We will talk to you about all your options and together we will use what we think is best for your case. Now that you learn about polymyalgia aromatica, you should also learn about the story of this patient of mine who saw five specialists before he was diagnosed with giant cell arthritis. Because if you don't, it can change your life forever. And you can see his story here.